Yes, our God is an awesome God. He is an amazing God. And uh, if we can just somehow or other comprehend what God's doing. so. But our God is an awesome God. But He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. That's in Hebrews 11, 6. I think what we've got to understand that God's not just a pushover. He's not just sitting around waiting for us or something like that. But I do believe that as a people, we've got to go after God. We've, we've got to, uh, some, something inside us. And that word diligent there, or diligence or diligent means uh, persistent application, hard working, showing care and effort. We've got to put some effort into this. We've got to, with our believing. You know, sometimes there when we, when we start to believe God, it's like all hell breaks loose. Anybody notice that? And things go wrong and things seem to... But, and and lot, many people give up. But that's not a time to give up. It's a time to persistently apply the Word of God to our life. Persistently believe that God is a rewarder of those who di diligently seek Him. So it's not just a, a walk in the park. It, there's some work, there's effort. There's effort that's got to come into our life. Australians have got a, an amazing saying, she'll be right, mate. And you know, I reckon that's a curse. Because we just sit by and wait. But I believe that we can make some things happen. We can, with our believing, with, with whatever's going on. I believe that God is seeking those who will diligently seek Him. The Word of God says in James 4.8, it says, if I draw near to him, he will draw near to me. And as a Christian, it's our believing and it's our wanting. I want God more than anything else. I just want his presence around my life. I want, I want to know, as Sarah said before, that, that I am accepted, that, that I'm, I'm a candidate for everything that God has for me. Everything in this word, we are candidates. But if the enemy can lie to us and steal whatever it might do, he will do it. Our God is an awesome God. I believe that God has things reserved for us that are beyond our wildest comprehension, beyond our wildest, wildest dreams or even imagination. What God can do. I was talking to Rocky this, uh, yesterday and I was talking about uh, that, that woman that I spoke about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Eddie, what's her name? That lady. And, and I said that, you know, she'd, she went into a trance for, for, you know, hours. Rocky said she went into a trance for three days. For three days. And I thought that, but I, in the, uh, what I was uh, referring to, it, it didn't say that. So God wants to blow our thinking, our, our, our natural thinking, the way we think, the battle that's in our mind. Uh, you know, today, what, which, is, which amazes me, is that one of the uh, problems we've got now is mental health. And again, if we continue the way we're going, it's going to be one of the major causes of death in our society that we've ever seen. People that are, and it's because of confusion. It's because even in the church today, there are so many opinions. Opinions. And you know, I always say opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got them and most of them smell. But we've all got opinions. We've all got this opinion. And even with Israel Falau, with the, what he's doing there. And, and you see these people on television and that, and uh, because he's there trying to, uh, raise money to, to defend the, the cause. And they say he's got so much money. It's all about money. It's all about money. No, he wants the church, he wants the leaders of the church to get up off their blessed assurance and do something to support. And what's the problem with the church is that we're so often are prepared to let one person do all the work and we want to receive all the benefits. But if you don't diligently seek him, I want to tell you, you miss out. There's a pushing in, there's a drawing near, there's a, there's a wanting, there's a hunger, there's a passion, there's a pursuit. There, this, is, this is what Christianity is all about. 
You know, the Bible in the Old Testament and New, New Testament reveals a God who is not limited. A God who is not limited, but a God who moves in mysterious ways. God made the universe, the whole world, from absolutely nothing. That's an amazing thing. And if we can start, start to comprehend the power that God has invested in His Word and start to believe it, I believe we'll see great changes. I want to ask this question. Is there anything too hard for God? Is that circumstance, is that situation, is that, that little trial that perhaps you're going through, is it above what God can do? Or can God do something about that? Can God arrange just supernaturally for Roma to meet up with a man like that? that and I, I believe that after uh, Roma got through to him, that that thing was shut down. You couldn't get through anymore. There was a space about that size, and that's all there was. And I ought to tell you, friends, you get into the presence of God, there's a space that might be that size, it's not a time to say, I'll do it later. It's a time to do it now. Time to get involved now. It's time to let God be God. Nothing's too hard for God. See, in the Western world, we have a logic and a natural mindset. You know, one of our greatest problems is our mindsets. The thing that's been put inside of us. The things that the world system education, goodness knows what, they're bombarding us. There's kids today that are on these uh, different computer games. Their minds are being bombarded with lies of the enemy. Television, different things, different programs, different books, different sorts of things. Our minds are being bombarded. And so we, when we come to the things of God, we, we have problems. With the natural world, we've got to try to figure out if God can really do what He says. And perhaps you've lost that time then. We've been taught to reason. Be careful. Don't be silly. It may not work. <laughs> Romans 12 verse 1 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. You see, God, I believe, will do more than you and I could ever, ever imagine. The Bible says, and I'm going to read it, because it's a, it's a very interesting verse of Scripture. We know it well. And I know I've said it before, and I'll say it again and again. There's some Scriptures that I was taught as a, as a young man, or as a young Christian rather, that sort of, if I can say it like this, that when I heard the truth, the truth had to filter through this. And by the time it got through there, it had lost its power. Because there's a scripture in the Bible that says, I has not seen, here has not heard, Neither has it entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love Him. So I, I was taught and I've heard it taught that we don't have a clue and we don't know and all this sort of stuff and you'll never know. But one day somehow or other I was reading that scripture and I started to read it says, But, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For no man knows the ways of man except the Spirit of man that is in him. Neither will you know the ways of God except through the Spirit that's in you. And today the modern church is going away from the Spirit of God. They're frightened of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God might do something that might upset the church or something like that. Well, I want to tell you, I believe it needs to be upset. <laughs> Amen. Well, man knows the things of man except the spirit of man. It says, but uh, 
Be carnally minded as death. We believe that. I didn't have to read it. I remembered it. <laughs> See, the Bible says according to your faith or your believing or your belief system, be it unto you. And if somehow or other you've, something's gone inside there and that scripture used to bombard me, I, I couldn't get through it. When I heard other things, I said, well, that doesn't work with that until I read but. See, what I found is this, that if my best friend gave me poison, it would still kill me. If my best friend accidentally gave me poison, or if I accidentally gave it to myself, it would still kill me. And friend, we're in a time where we really need to hear and have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches. Because there's so much mixture out there. And it's like going to the supermarket and looking and there's all these different labels and all these different things all claiming to be the same. We've got Christians today that have got theology and stuff that, that is so messed up. We've got to somehow or other here again. It's, your belief, it's our belief system, be it unto you. If they don't know or ever heard, how is the truth ever going to enter in? If we stay ignorant to what God has made available to us, we will never, ever enter in. God wants us to enter in. God has made available to us, uh, sorry, I've already said that. Through the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, through the outpouring of the mighty Holy Spirit, which He did on the day of Pentecost, and not only that, the multitude of promises that He's made to us. And somewhere along the line, as a people, we've got to start to get the Word of God. And I thank God for Roma as she started to just bring those words out because we've got to get the Scripture into us. We've got to know what God says about our circumstance. We've got to know not what the world says. The world says it's hopeless. Well, it says there's no hope, but God says, nothing is too difficult for me. Nothing is too difficult for me. And I want to believe that. What do you want to believe? God is a mighty God. Given us everything that we need to life and to godliness. We must push through the walls of unbelief, fear and doubt and explore the unsearchable or unreachable or whatever, however you want to say it. Our riches that God has made for us. There's so much more that we have that we have. If we say ignorant to what is available, we'll never enter into the fullness. God wants the church, I believe, to come into maturity and fullness. See, in the Hebrew culture, they understood that the Lord was a supernatural being above natural law. They understood some things that we don't understand. Nothing was impossible for him whenever they got into a circumstance. So, so they lived with an understanding of a supernatural possibility of divine intervention. They understood that. They realized that. They knew that this God could do something that was bigger than their natural understanding. They didn't take it for granted, but they knew without doubt that God was very, very real. We find in 1 Samuel 30, verse 1, we find the children of Israel, with da oh, sorry, David's mighty men. They were going to fight with the Philistines, and the Philistines had rejected them. Here, they, here are all the boys, and that's how they got their money. They were hired out for, to do battle against the other kings. So he's got all his men, his 600 men, and they go out to battle, and they're all in battle array ready to go, and they're mostly thinking what they're going to buy with the money, another camel, <laughs> whatever. And all of a sudden, the, the lords look over and they said, who's that fella? <laughs> And they said, no, we don't want him unless when the battle gets hot, they might, he might turn sides because we know what he can do. 
And so here they are, they're coming home. Can you imagine that journey coming home? 600 of them complaining and not that, yeah, whinging. <laughs> but when they get home, they find Ziglag has been plundered by an enemy, but not only that, it's been burnt to the ground. Their wives and their, all their goods and chattel and their children and everything's gone. It wasn't that they just said, oh, yeah, no. It says that they wept until they could weep no more. But David was there and he heard the sounds of these men because they were so angry with him. that They said, what we're going to do, we'll stone him. It's all his fault. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Then he went to the priest and he said, bring me the earpod. Bring it here to me. And he got with the priest and they began to pray. And they said, he said, shall I pursue this enemy? Will I overtake this enemy? I want to tell you, friends, there's things that you and I need to do. We need to get the Word of God inside us. We need to get God's truth and get hold of that truth and just say, God, I'm believing that this is your Word to me. I believe that you are a God of the supernatural. I believe that there's nothing too difficult for you. I believe that, you, we, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'm going to start confessing this word. I'm going to start speaking it. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to overtake that thing. See, these things just don't happen. If Sarah there, she's believing God. She's getting prayer. She's, she's got the word of God inside her. She's, she's going to break through that thing. Because you've got to get hold of the promises of God. Shall we pursue? Shall we pursue this enemy? He inquired of the Lord. And the answer came back and says, You shall overtake. And you shall go and get and take back everything that's been stolen. Can I say this to you today? We need to hear that. Because Jesus has won that battle for us. And he wants to say to us today, You can pursue. You can overtake. You can go after. You can pull down. Because I've already won the battle. I've already destroyed the works of Satan. And I've given you weaponry. I've given you my word. I've given you my power. I've given you my anointing. I've given you the victory. I've given you everything that you need. And if we can just start, start to believe and break through. And because I believe with every fiber of my being that where the church is going to is beyond our wildest dreams. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think. I believe we're going to see creative miracles. I believe we're going to see a, a, a change. And, and this here, you see, David comes on the scene and, and cries out to God and God says, you shall pursue it. And he goes out to the boys and says, okay, boys, we're going. He didn't have to have a committee meeting. He didn't have to have three Shandra Mondays and two something else's. He had a word from God. Can I say, oh, you get a word from God, amen? Can you hear what I'm saying here today? You get a word from God, you can hang on to it, amen? He got a word from God, said so you can go and pursue it. And there he goes, he says to his 600 men, come on boys, we're going. We're going on a word from God. We're going on a, on a word. On a word, hallelujah. For 200 of them had to stay by the brook Basaur. And he went on there and he overtook them. And he triumphed over them. He slaughtered the whole lot of them. It says that 400 of them, young fellows escaped on the camels. But the rest of them were slain. He took back the herds. He took back everything that was stolen, all the plunder that had ever, that this other group of people, the Amalekites, had ever, ever plundered. He took the whole lot back. Friend, I want to tell you, the church has lost so much. So much has been stolen out of the church. One of the things that's been stolen is the Word of God. It's been watered down and it's been trying to make everybody happy. 
It's, trying, it's, it's got the Word of God saying things that it doesn't say. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered the heart. You wouldn't have a clue. You don't know what you're doing. So why would you even bother asking? Because God says, I have revealed them to you through my Spirit. We want the Holy Ghost. Amen. We want the anointing. We want the presence of God. Just want God to be God and let Him be God. God, I believe, is doing amazing things. He, he, he destroyed that army. He did great things. What we need to understand is that God's worth is very, very simple, but at the same time, very, very profound. Sometimes it's a simple word that will change you. God wants to open revelation to us. Revelation. In Luke 24, 45, it says, And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the Scriptures. Who did? God did. God, as you seek God, He will reveal stuff to you. In Luke 8, 10, it says, And He said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables. In other words, those that are seeking after God, those that are going after God, those that want God, God will reveal the truth to you. It's not just going to be sitting around waiting. I, I, I admire Israel Falau. I admire the man. And I thank God that even though he's got multi-millions, he put it out there. He got criticized for it. He's been smashed for it. Even the church in many places are pulling him down. But what he's saying is, come on, boys. Come on, girls. We want to do this together. This is not just for me. Not just so that I get restored to, to my football. He most probably never played with that team again. And I wouldn't blame him. I, I, I don't, it's not for me. This is for the church. And we know that there's a devil out there and the devil wants to take the freedom of speech away from us. He wants to take stuff away from us. There's an enemy out there and he wants to destroy what God wants to do. But those who are followers of Jesus with passion, they will know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. We've been talking a lot about passion lately. Too long the church in Australia has been held in the wilderness of natural thinking. Can I say that again? We've been held in the wilderness of natural thinking. If we can understand it, perhaps God can do it. But we've got to see beyond that, beyond our natural thinking, beyond our understanding. Too much of the church today have never, ever tasted of the reality or the goodness of God. I believe there's so much more for us to experience. You believe that? You hungry for it? I was blessed today. There was over 20 people at the back of the hall praying. Praying for this meeting. Over 20 people. A little church like this. 30 people coming along to a prayer meeting of a Tuesday night. That blows me away. I believe as we draw near to the end of time, God is going to do things that will stagger our imaginations. I read this scripture the other week and I want to read it to you again. Matthew 23, 13. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither do you allow them that are entering in to go in. Even though the scribes and Pharisees did not understand or realize such a place existed because of their belief system, because of their mindsets, it stopped them from entering in. I believe that God's going to raise up a generation of people that are going to go right in. Amen? 
It'll go right in. There's times when our mindsets and our belief systems will speak louder to us than the Word of God. A truth that's in the Word of God, even a prophetic word, even, even whatever. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Oh. Our belief system will speak louder than the Word of God, than the Spirit of God. That's why we've got to have our minds renewed. Our minds renewed. I want to ask you this question. There is a place we may not have been yet. You know what I'm talking about? But it's there all the time. It does exist, and God wants to take us in. Are we willing to say yes to the Lord? There's a place that God wants to take us. There's a place. There's a place. There's a place near to the heart of God. There's a place. There's a place, a holy place, where you go past the brazen altar, where in I, I, you can't explain it because it's not a natural one step, two steps. We read a lot of manuals and different things Seven steps to the Holy Spirit. Eight steps here. Nine steps there. I've done them all. I tried them all. Because I was so hungry. But when I got to the end, I just found that I was on the precipice. But I believe that there's a place in our hearts. And I want to say this. It's not man can do it. But God Causing something inside of us. Amen? Is it okay to talk like this? I'm not talking hocus pocus. There's a place. And there's a stirring. Are you willing? Are we willing to let God take us in? Are we willing? Just bow your heads with me. Father, And why don't you stand to your feet? I pray that God today could go beyond my words because I don't, in my, just in myself, I'm, I don't feel that I've been able to present what's in my heart. But what I believe is that God by His Spirit has to reveal it to us. And it won't happen while we're just playing a game. It will happen as we diligently go after God. As we go after Him with persistence. As I, I, I honestly believe what the Spirit of God is saying to me is prepare the church for a move of my Spirit that when it comes, when it comes, when it comes, they'll be able to receive it. It's a little bit like the, the soil. We, God use, calls us soil. When the soil is prepared by the farmers, and we know that God is a master farmer, that when the rains come, it just doesn't run off. And I believe that we've had lots of revivals over the years. And the many of those revivals that we've seen last a year or two years, and then they fade away. Basically because perhaps the church wasn't ready. You know, in 93, we weren't ready for what God was doing. And it ended up there were so many different versions and so many different thinkings and so much stuff that, that we lost what was going on trying to work it all out. 
But I believe that God wants to do something by His Spirit to prepare the church for this great end time revival. Joe said it the other night. He believes, and I believe it, and it's, I, it's not just us or, or this few, but the prophetic utterance all around the world today is saying that we're closer to the end. It's, it's brewing. There's something brewing. There's something brewing in the Holy Ghost. There's something brewing. And we're to get ourselves ready for it. So, Father, I'm just asking you now, I'm asking you now, my God, go beyond what I could say. Go beyond my ability to, to, to share what, what's on my heart. Go beyond people's even ability to be able to understand it. Plant a seed deep on the inside of us, my God, that will burst forth and bring that restoration or that freedom that we're looking for. And my God, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. We'll give you all the praise, Father. We want you. We want to see you moving, my God. We want you. Now, I'm just going to open this altar this morning. You might be here today and you don't know Jesus. Give him your life today. He's not a taskmaster. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We must believe that God is and that He is a rewarder. Maybe here today and there's some blockages or things there, or I don't know. But you might have your heart wide open too and you just say, God, water that seed. There's something about coming and yielding and opening your heart to God. The anointing comes and touches things. Don't understand a lot of things. All I know that I've seen lives changed. My own life. If you're here this morning and that's you and you just want to come and stand in His presence. But here I am, Lord. The Roma said, here I am. Use me. Here I am.